there. They're side by side, gracefully to the end. Their stars, the drivers, are bigger than life. Next on World of Trucks. It's the 18th annual Four Wheel Jamboree. Coming to you today from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Hello everyone, welcome to the World of Trucks. I'm Claude Wood, and when you say World of Trucks, what comes to mind immediately? It has got to be these monsters, these babies right here. Look at the fans in the stands. When they come out, when they fire these trucks up, you talk about the excitement, and that is what we have for you today. We have the Raminator. We have the Big Dog. Almost a dozen monster trucks today, all for you on the World of Trucks. Now, with an in-depth look at exactly what is a monster truck, let's go to our pit reporter, Doc Riley. Thanks, Claude. What is a monster truck? This is a big, bad monster truck. It doesn't matter if it's got a Ford, a Dodge, a Chevy, anything on the nameplate. They all have got a couple of things in common. The first, they have to weigh at least 9,200 pounds. That's the minimum weight. They all run on alcohol, supercharged engines. Now, unlike your regular truck where the business end is up underneath the hood, the business end here is in the bed. Blower's there. You can see the little field blower. Lots and lots of horsepower, about 572 cubic inches, anywhere to up to about 1,400 horsepower. Fuel cell in the back. The reason for that, the weight distribution. These tires right here are 66 inches tall, and that really is the determining factor on what makes a monster truck a monster truck. John Seesock has a pretty aggressive cut on his tires through here, hoping to be able to dig into the ground and get that horsepower transferred from that big power plant right here to these tires. 9,200 pounds, 66 inch tires, and the rest is up to each individual driver. Monster Truck Racing, we've got eight of them coming your way. Thanks, Doc. Let's get it started with round one right now. Dan Runty comes to the line in Bigfoot, and his competitor will be Jim Kohler. Joining me in the booth today, expert analyst Rick Carlson. And Rick, what a great day of racing this is going to be. Uh, it will be fun here. Remember, there are no times that whoever gets to the other end first. Looks like Dan Runny and Bigfoot, that 572 cubic inch Hemi Ford, got there first. And getting his stop down on the other end. Rick, let's go to the replay and see just what happened there. He's off the line really fast. All right, looks like Jim Kohler and that uh, 55 Chevrolet, the Avenger, just had no power from the beginning. Runty was a runaway. That he was. Down to the top end, here's Doc Riley. Well, Team Bigfoot's brought out one of the big guns, Jim Kramer, one of the original drivers back, uh, well, more than a couple years <laughs> back right there. Hey, it uh, looked like you put down a pretty good pass. Well, it wasn't bad. You know, our camp thinks the right lane is the lane to be in. Dan did draw the left lane. That's the way it goes. He handled it very well. Got with the first jump, got a little crooked, but the Hemi came back, pulled him through. Dale Benier backing up the Ramunition Dodge, getting ready to do business, and he will face the Big Dog, and Rick, the Big Dog, well-known everywhere. All right, Big Dog, Doug Nolke has a couple of victories this year. Benier currently in second spot in the points chase in the Ramunition Dodge. Dodge and Ford, and it looks like Big Dog, your Ford wins it. And Rick, that was a very close race, and we mentioned a few minutes ago, the winner determined by who gets to the finish line first. Rick, take us through it. They left evenly. You can see coming off the first jump that Big Dog Ford in the near lane, a little bit of a lead. Now it looks like Ramunition has taken over, but right there, landing first, Big Dog, you win again. Once again, Doc Ryder. Time for a little Big Dog party, huh, here in Bloomsburg. Oh. Nice pass. Oh, thank you, man. That felt really good. Last night, track's a little loose, you know, qualifying and stuff like that, but, man, that felt good. Usually, you come to Bloomsburg, and it's just dry, dry, dry. They've had a lot of rain early in the week. Do you think that's going to help the track later on today? Oh, yeah, yeah. The track, I mean, it's got a lot of moisture in it. It's not dry and dusty. You know, you're getting good traction out there. So, man, just hang on. Put her to the floor and see what happens, man. <laughs> Thanks. World of Trucks is being brought to you by Stainless Steel Brakes. Performance brakes built right by Stainless Steel Brakes. And by Lug. Get the look. When it comes to automotive accessories, Doug Nolke cooling off with some of the kids, always one of the crowd favorites. Welcome back to World of Trucks. Now, 
Here's Doc Wright. All right. The determining factor for a monster truck is a 66 inch tire. And if you notice the tire here, it's got big cleats on it. That's designed so it digs into the ground, is able to clear that dirt and uh, gravel that's there off to the side. It's very aggressive right here. The guys from Bigfoot will spend an awful lot of time grooving this just to make sure that they've got maximum bite on the starting line. Bigfoot from time to time will become an innovator. After all, these guys invented a monster truck 30 years ago. This is what they're trying today. This is a turf tire be used on a sod farm and essentially they've cut this tire in order to give them a lot more room to clear some of the uh, dirt and mud that we see here at Bloomsburg from time to time. A lot of gravel in here so this gives them some open space and it also gives them an opportunity to use these edges right here in a number of different areas to get maximum traction. It's in the experimental stage. We'll see what happens as rounds continue but Dan Runney picked up a round win. Let's see what he can do in the future. Thanks, Doc. Continuing on with round one, this will be Mike Potters in the Black Stallion. His opponent, Mark Hall in the Raminator Dodge. And Rick, these guys on the Raminator Dodge team are always, always very tough. Mark and Brother Tim, current points leader, reigning champion, and they have a huge points lead. They have a huge lead the race. And Raminator continues to add to that massive points lead. And as John Seesock comes to the line in T-Max, let's go down and check in with Doc. Hey, Tim Hall, the crew chief right here. Mark, uh, picking up another win in the uh, Raminator. Yeah, our Rupert Raminator this time. Um, everything's going pretty pretty smooth. We got a little uh, engine concerns there. We're getting her a little warm, but uh, we'll keep trying. You know, this is a good racetrack, really nice race, beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. We'll see if we can get us another round for this big Dodge. How do you cool that engine down? Well, it's just, a, it's all a solid block of aluminum, this Dodge Hemi. So all we can do is try to cool our oil a little bit and hopefully uh, buy a little time with the tough trucks between rounds and we'll be all right. The original monster truck team. You're looking at Bigfoot on its 30th anniversary. He will face the T-Max driven by John Seesaw. John Seesaw, the hometown hero in Bigfoot. This is the 30th anniversary for Dave Harkey, the original monster truck team. Bob Chandler started all this with Bigfoot, but not this time. T-Max picks up your win. And once again, Rick, that race was just so close. Let's check it out once again on the replay. John Seesack, T-Max, new truck to John this year. Looks fairly close here, but they get to that second jump. T-Max just takes over. Check in with Doc Riley. He's with our winner. Well, congratulations. That's going to make you feel great, especially when it's here in your home state. All guaranteed, man. We're 20 minutes from home, and it's not often we get to play in our background, in our backyard, you know. And I mean, these guys out here are tough. You know, Bigfoot's you know, 30 years, man. What can you say about that, you know? And uh, this tough race, we're going to take one at a time. You know, every round here could be a fine round anywhere in the country, and we're going to take one at a time and see where we can pull this thing off. It'd mean a lot to win at Bloomsburg, wouldn't it? Big time. Man, this is my backyard. I have a lot of family, friends up here. I mean, it, this is, man, this place is awesome. <laughs> you know, I love it up here. And the job we've done so far, this is how it shakes out as we head into the semifinal round. Time Alpha product highlight, which features some of the most interesting and innovative aftermarket products for your vehicle. This product highlight is for anybody that takes their off-road vehicle into the boonies. We're down here at the Missouri Off-Road Outfitters display. This is Steve Frisbee, the owner, with three products to tell us about. Tell us about the Rock Bruiser. Our Rock Cruiser differential covers are designed to take abuse that people sub uh, subject their vehicles to off-road. Uh, they hold more volume of fluid so they run cooler and uh, they're, they're built to take anything you can dish out at them. We've got several left in our shop that are scored up, beat up, they still work. So. What about the over-the-top axle truss? What's that? We're the only manufacturer in the United States that builds an over-the-top axle truss. It's a true bolt-on option. It stiffens your axle housing, makes your bearings last longer, takes all the stress of the big tires that people put on their vehicles. We have applications for just about every vehicle that's made today that's leaf sprung for the most part. Uh, and it's, it's an excellent added feature to most vehicles or where the axle housing would be the weak link with, a, with running larger tires. And right between us here is the wrap zapper. What's this? This is something new we just introduced. It's a traction device. We hate to use a traction bar because it's not. It truly mounts up out of the way, away from the uh, above the drive shaft for the maximum clearance for your vehicle. It's out of the way. It doesn't get damaged. It's, it's designed to work in conjunction with your suspension. It allows it to move fully, but yet keep your axle under control. It eliminates all axle wrap. All right, rock bruiser, over-the-top axle truss, and wrap zapper. 
You get those three products and you'll be ready to rock. Stay with us. More Monster Trucks when we come back. Welcome back to the world of trucks from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Lots of gorgeous trucks on the grounds today. Let's see what Doc Riley has found for us. Why do you have Flowmaster exhaust on your vehicle? Because I love to hear the horsepower through those mufflers. I had it before, and I'll always like Flowmaster. Meanwhile, back out on the monster truck course, that's the Summit truck, and it's driven by Dan Runty. He will face the big dog. A pair of Fords here, and there's going to be a dodge against the Ford. So Ford's outnumbering everybody else at least three to one. There we go. Dan Runny and Doug Nolke, and Dan Runny, Summit Bigfoot, your winner. A little bit of problems there from Doug Nolke. Let's see exactly what happened on the replay. Rick, it looks like he might have lost power about a half track. Sit there equal here, but then he just slows down. Looks like he gets a little off course. Rundy trying to get to his first win of the year, and that's hard to believe with Bigfoot. Let's go down to the top end. Dan Rundy takes a win right there. Nice pass. Yeah, it was. I mean, it got a little loose, but I guess Big Dog did too. You know, it, it's a lot out there. You know, it's throwing you up in the air a little bit, and you're having to drive it back to the second set of cars. We knew we had to run tough there. I mean, pulled one out for Bigfoot there, but like I said, it's a driving course. Back out on the course, there's the T-Max, driven by John Seasock, and he will face the Raminator Dodge by Mark Hall. Rick, could there be some intimidation factor here? Well, there always is when you're up against Mark Hall driving, and Tim Hall is the free chief. Points leader, the defending series champ. And we'll see what, oh my goodness, this is the upset. That hometown hero, T-Max, makes it into the final. Intimidation or not, that's the way it worked out. Ever want to ride in a big truck? Here you go. What do you see? Oh, that first jump you see. Nothing but sky and then the ground as you come down. So looks like a good ride for Seesaw. Down on top end, he has got to be pleased. Awful lot of horsepower out there in that track. Yeah, definitely, man. It's a fast track. You, you're coming in. I didn't lift at all. I mean, I, the light went green. I planted my foot to the floor, and I didn't lift till we were way past the finish line. I don't take any chances, you know. This old track is T-Max. is awesome. I couldn't ask for a better sponsor, better company to be hooked up with. I'm a big kid, and I get to drive a big toy now. Well, this one is going to be very interesting going into the final summit. Bigfoot will face the T-Max. Time now for a product highlight, which features some of the most interesting and innovative aftermarket products for your vehicle. On this product highlight, it should be of interest to anybody who does any towing. Now, if you have mud flaps on your tow vehicle, it's protecting that part of the equation. But what about whatever it is you're towing? What protects that? Tow Tector is designed to do that. And Dan Skibot is the president of Tow Tector. You've got an interesting little d demonstration here of what happens when you're towing something. Yes, Bill. It's a misconception with most people. They think they're protecting what they're towing by just simply putting on a mud flap. People don't realize that most of the debris that is hitting what they're towing is coming in between their back wheels. So it's very, very important to get protection across the full back of the vehicle. Talk about tow tector now. It's individually designed for specific vehicles, not one size fits all. Correct. Um, there's different widths for different vehicles, and there's several different heights of brush strips that accommodate different receiver heights. Our patented support bar keeps the brush strips from blowing back and gives you maximum protection. Phil, one of the things I like about the product is it has double brush strips rather than single, and that really should keep your towed vehicle protected. And the mounting bracket seems really simple. Yeah, Bill, what we did here uh, from the beginning was let, let's do it right. So what we did is we backed it up with a double brush strip, okay, which gave double the protection. Also, the easeability of mounting this thing on the ball mount. Uh, it, you can put the ball mount right through the, the product and put it right into the s receiver, and it takes just a matter of seconds. The clamping device, too, is, is totally awesome. It's real easy to put on and real easy to take off. Also with this product, we've put a wall mount storage bracket with it that can be mounted in your garage, so when you take it off your vehicle, you can put the whole thing up on the wall for easeability. As fast as it goes on the wall is as fast as you can put it back on your vehicle. Thanks a lot, Phil. It's called Tow Tector, and it may be the best product out there, not so much for protecting your tow vehicle, but what's behind it. 
World of Trucks is being brought to you by Honda, the power of dreams. And by Hallmark, built strong for the way you work and play. Welcome back to the World of Trucks from the Four Wheel Jamboree Nationals in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Now, let's check in with Doc Riley. In the world of motorsports, there are very few names that have stood the test of time. One of those names is Bigfoot, the Bigfoot Ford with the Firestone tires, approaching 30 years. Now, many people have occupied that driver's seat up there, some great drivers like Andy Brass and a guy that now is vice president of operations for Bigfoot, Jim Kramer. Bigfoot is the first monster truck ever built. I've been with him 25 years. It's been a long haul, but a fun one. Bob Chandler really is the guy that's been given a lot of credit for the, the idea and the mission. And, it's my understanding he still has a lot of great ideas, doesn't he? Sure he's got ideas. Never stops. Comes into work every day. You know, so most times he's got a new idea. So it's fun to be with him. I'm glad he still takes the interest in it. He does. He eats, sleeps, and drinks monster trucks. What can I say? He lives it. Of course, many people have worked for the Bigfoot team, a number of drivers, fabricators, and folks in the shop. But the person that put it all together, along with his wife, Marilyn, is Bob Chandler, the original Bigfoot. I still don't know how, how far it's going to go. People ask me where it's going from here. I have no idea. And I wasn't sure it was going to last this long. But I'm happy. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying meeting a lot of people. And Bloomberg's one of our great shows. So Bigfoot's almost become an icon. You say Bigfoot, and immediately people know what it is. Bigfoot's, we pushed the name of Bigfoot on a truck from, from its very beginning. We didn't push, you know, my, my name or any of the driver's name, the truck's name. And it's kind of taken over because kids know it as Bigfoot. You know, it's, it's not a pick, Ford pickup truck necessarily. It's Bigfoot. So that's what we push all along, and it seems to, seem to have carried. So. You know, this idea, and you told me before, that it just kind of took off. It just kind of, uh, you know, went nuts all of a sudden. But kind of relived that moment of when Bigfoot kind of became Bigfoot. Well, the, the name came about because I'd race every weekend and tear my truck up. And when I got back to the shop every Monday morning, my general manager started calling me Bigfoot because I couldn't keep my foot out of the throttle. And I stuck the name on the side of the truck because it had big tires, so I figured that's where I got the Bigfoot out of it. And from that point on, it just, it just grew and grew and grew. We, we went out to the field one time and crushed some cars to see if we could do it. And then the promoter saw that and wanted us to do it in front of the crowd, and we did it at uh, Jefferson, Jefferson City, Missouri. It was the first place we, we crushed cars for a crowd, and the people went nuts. And every, you know, from that point on, that's all we can do. We, we race now and we clear the cars. You know, all we need is ramps, but we've taken the cars out before and people don't like it. But that's something that I guess we've created from the start, and it's, it's the way it goes. The trucks are totally different than anything else out there. The unsprung, the sprung weight is backwards of any other vehicle. Uh, we run a fiberglass body, we run 1,500 horsepower, and a 10,000 pound truck. I mean, how do you make a 10,000 pound truck do what the, when we first started, I was talking to some people years and years ago, I said, there's no way to take these trucks off the ground, they break in pieces, and now we're jumping airplanes and jumping semis with them, so it still amazes me. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you very much, Doc. A lot of history behind the Bigfoot team, driven by Dan Runty as he brings his machine to the line to face John Seesaw. And once again, Rick, this will be a big moment for John Seesaw. Well, you have two racers who have not visited Victory Lane this year. Bigfoot surprising Seesaw won the year before, but now able to get in here. The local hero against that big mate of it, Bigfoot truck. Bigfoot first off of the line, and he takes the victory. Let's go to the replay and see, Rick, exactly how he did it. Well, they lead together. I don't know if it's the new style tires, that new tread pattern that Runny has, or the years of experience, but it was close. Seesaw trying to take the win, but the uh, Runty, the veteran, shines in this one. Back down to top end. Here's Doc Rock. Hey, congratulations, a win at Bloomsburg. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, new sponsorship. And we're playing a lot with tires, too, as everybody can tell. I mean, kind of throwed some stuff around yesterday because we didn't know what it was going to do on account of rain, you know. And it worked pretty good, so we left it alone today. We got Jim and Bob are here, you know, just the whole team. I mean, that's where Bigfoot started 30 years ago, and it's tough, you know. It just, to get a win like this means a lot here. 
What does it mean for you as a driver and as a person to be able to drive for a team with this rich of motorsport history? I mean, if you look at it, a lot of teams do not go back 30 years with one sponsor and Ford and, and things of that nature. What does it mean for you to be able to sit in that seat? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, Doc, I can't explain it. You know, driving for, for the man. I mean, that's the way we look at it. He's just an awesome boss, and, you know, he, he brought this a long ways. It's just, like I said, I can't explain it. It's just really cool. You know, we put our heads together. You know, we work with Nelkies a lot and stuff, and, and our team at the shop. Like, it's just, I mean, I couldn't ask for better. Congratulations, champ. Thank you. You got to love it, Rick. The emotion is still on Dan's face, probably as much as it was the very first one. After 10 of 18 rounds, Mark Hall out in first place in the Raminator Dodge. In points. Congratulations to him. Now, let's go to freestyle. This is Andy Slifko. Well, he started out with four tires on the rim, finished with that jump with just three. Kirk Dabney, Monster Patrol, going to climb over that big step van and put the front end up in the air. And Rick, this is freestyle, but it's all about go out. You've got one goal, one objective here, and that is please the crowd. And you can hear the crowd in the background. Monster Patrol, one of the favorites, taking out all the signs. That'll bring up Trey Meyer and the Iron Warrior. Iron Warrior, you can see he's in the midst of some work on the truck, and what's he going to do? He'll just slowly walk over the cars with the step van. Now he's going to dog track a little bit toward us. That four-wheel steering makes it easy to do some of these tricks in freestyle. Up next, Andy Hoffman in the nightmare. Wow, look at the air. And he comes down a little crooked, turns it around. What's next for the nightmare? More car crushing action. I've talked to the guys, Rick, before they went on, and they were really excited about coming out and pleasing the crowd today. Nightmare and the big burnout, just throwing up dust and dirt everywhere. And the crowd loves it. That step van still isn't getting any shorter. Got a feeling it will. If you would like more information on products shown today, log on to these websites. Be sure to join us for World of Trucks. Next week, it will be Tough Trucks from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. We'll look for you. That'll put a wrap on today's program. For Doc Riley and Rick Carlson and Bill Stevens, Claude Wood, keep on trucking.